All right, turn in your Bibles, please, to Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. In your Schofield Reference Bible, page 859. Starting with the first verse, we'll read through verse 6. With the sixth verse being the text verse for this morning's message. We will read the verses responsibly. Once again, Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. And in your Schofield Bible, page 859. Let's stand, please, for the reading of the Word of God, as we always do. And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them, to bring them forth of the land of Egypt, into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. And let's pray. Father, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for our church. It's a great place. Perhaps realize more so by folks who can't come. But help us who are privileged to be here to realize something of the blessing that is ours to be in this place and to be under the preaching of our preacher. Yes, him today, thank you that he's back safely along with Mrs. Hiles, and, and we're thankful, too, that you've given us such a day as this to be helped and to be challenged and to be blessed by thy word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me read for you, without your turning to it, one verse that I read, we read a while ago. It is the text verse from my message this morning. I was speaking this morning on God, the aspire. I spelled that. I'm not sure that's a word. It is now, but I'm not sure it was before now. God, the aspire. <clears throat> E-S-P-I-E-R is the way I would spell it. I read for you one verse in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 6. In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt. Now that's the Jews, Israelites, bondage, slaves in Egypt. And God said, I lifted up my hand to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied. That's E-S-P-I-E-D. God said in the land that I had espied for them, <coughs> flowing <coughs> with milk and honey, get this now, which is the glory of all lands. No wonder the, the Jordanians want the land of Israel. No wonder the Arabs want it. No wonder the Israelites want it. It is the glory of all lands. Now, wait a minute. It is, was the glory of all lands, and God said, I chose it as the promised land for my people Israel. But he said, <clears throat> the more glorious something is, the bigger the price. The more valuable something it is, something is, the more you have to pay for it. So God said that I espied the land for them, uh, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Now I ask you to listen carefully. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that you help me as I speak and our people as they hear. And I pray as the song was sung a while ago, may we say as we leave, I just heard from heaven, and it's all right now. 
May we hear from heaven. We, we, of course, will because we're preaching the book. And this book forever is settled in heaven. And so this morning, give us not only the awareness of thy presence, but that sweet assurance and feeling of thy presence with us. In Jesus' name, amen. God said, I made for them a land which I espied for them. Now, what does it mean when God said, I espied the land that flows with milk and honey, the land of glory, he said. Let me explain to you what it means. On several occasions, our D.C. and D. bus ministries have had contests. Sunday school contest and bus ministry contest. And Brother Ray Young, who is in charge of those, has given as a prize a trip to Europe. They go and they, they see Normandy and uh, the Har France and other places. They go to Germany and they go to Switzerland. And uh, they go on trips to Europe. Numbers of you people have been on such a trip. Now, Brother Young, before the trip ever takes place, he himself goes alone to Europe, and he plans for the trip to Europe. He checks the hotels to be sure they have <clears throat> adequate uh, uh, facilities. He checks to find, be sure they have uh, buses that they can use for their tours, and uh, he checks sometimes train trips that they must take across uh, Europe. And he goes and he goes to Europe and plans the trip and then comes back over here after he himself has been there and made provisions and plans for the trip. He comes back and then he takes the people who won the contest on the trip to Europe and he has espied the land for them. He's gone before them and prepared the way. He has gone before them and prepared the transportation. He has gone before them and has prepared the lodging. He has gone before them and has prepared their meals. He has gone before them and has prepared their safety while they are in Europe. And that's exactly what God is saying here. God is saying that I went into the land of Canaan and I espied that land before I even brought my people, or ask my people to go. The same thing is said in Psalm 59:10. Uh, much the same thing. His many, his mercy shall prevent me. The psalmist said. That word "prevent" in the Bible means to go before me or precede me. His mercies shall precede me. And then again in Psalm 79 and verse 8, let thy tender mercies speedily. Prevent us. What is he saying? <clears throat> He's saying that let God's verses go before us and prepare the way for us. Listen carefully to me now. Here's what God was saying. God was saying to Israel, I want you, wanted you to have the promised land. God is saying to Israel, I wanted the best for you, and the promised land is the best. It's the glory land, if you please. The land that flows with milk and honey, he said, and I wanted that for you. Now he said, I knew that between the land of Egypt, where you were, and the land of Canaan, where you're going, I knew there were some hardships you'd have to face. So what God said is this. God said, I left the land of Egypt myself, and I, I took the entire journey that you were going to take. And I went before you, and I planned for you. I provided for your trip. I went myself all the way into the land of Canaan, from the land of Egypt, across the wilderness, in the land of Canaan. And then God said, I came back and after having provided for you. He's saying, I wanted you to have the land. I wanted you to have the best. I knew that you would have difficulties. I went ahead and prepared for you. I saw that you would have hunger, and so I prepared manna to fall every day morning, like the holy frost of the dawn. He said, I knew that you would have thirst, and so I prepared 
prepared the rock in Horeb from which would gush enough water to care for your needs of water. He said, I saw you wandering in the land as I espied the land for you. And so I prepared a cloud to guide you and lead you where you ought to go. I saw your cold nights and so I prepared a pillar of fire by night to warm you on the journey. He said, I saw a sea and uh, I saw no way humanly speaking of you to cross that sea. So I went before you and planned a way where that sea could be parted. What God was saying was this. He was saying, I wanted that land for you. I know that the journey to that land is a tough one. I know their difficulties. I know their nights of trial. I know their pain. I know you have enemies. I know you'll have struggles. I know you'll have battles. And so God said, I went ahead, just like Brother Young goes to Europe and prepares everything for the coming of the of the tour group. God said, I went ahead for you and made preparation. God saw every battle they would face and planned a victory. God saw every burden that they would bear and planned strength for those burdens. God saw every tear that they would shed and planned a way for those tears to be dried. God saw every struggle that they would endure and God God planned the way through that struggle. So, hear me carefully. The Jews faced no battles they could not win. Why? Because God had inspired. God had gone out gone before and inspired the land and prepared them for every battle. They faced no battles they could not win. They bore no burden they could not bear. They faced no problems they could not solve. They faced no wound they, God could not heal. They knew no mountain that they could not climb. They knew no river that they could not forge. They knew no enemy that they could not defeat. This is called the promised land. I am on Jordan's stormy banks. I stand and cast the wistful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. But between the land of Egypt, ladies and gentlemen, and the glory land, the land that flowed with milk and honey, was many a night of loneliness, many a cold night, many a, a fierce animal between them and enemies to try to prevent them from going. And let me tell you this, the best thing that God has, God wants you to suffer to bring those things about because you appreciate those things more when you suffer. You will win no victories unless you have some battles. You will solve no problems unless you have some problems. You will know no sunrises unless you have some midnights. And so God espied the land. Then, follow me carefully. Don't leave me now. God <clears throat> saw the land of Canaan over there. And God saw the journey between Egypt and Canaan. And so God goes and God prepares for them. He prepares water for their thirst and food for their sustenance and their hunger. He prepares a cloud to lead them, a pillar of fire to warm them, warm them, as I said a while ago. And God goes all the way over into Canaan and he spies. Then God does something else. He comes back to Egypt. Brother Boyd, he chooses a leader. And he says to that leader, I want to take you out there on the trip. And I want you to know what your people are going to face. So God takes that leader on the same trip that he had taken. And for 40 years, that leader, Moses, spends the time, the same journey they're going to have to take. God had taken that journey, <clears throat> espied the land. But God is not visible to man, so God chose, chose a leader. And God put that leader and took that leader all the way to the promised land and showed him all the journey they would have to take. Then God comes back to the people with that leader, and God, and I love this, God said, thank you, my brother, God said, now I want all the people to go, but you won't have to go without somebody who's already been out to spy the land. Moses, your leader. But God said, I got some good news for you, I'll go with you too. So God and Moses lead the people across the land, across the wilderness, to the promised land. God is spied the land, and God comes back and says, I'll take Moses, and I'll have him spy the land, and then I'll take him back, and then all of us can go, and I will go with you, and Moses likewise will go with you. So he returns and chooses Moses. He takes that leader on the path the people must endure. 
He led Moses where he had been, God, that is, led Moses where he, God, had been. And for 40 years, Moses was there alone on, in, in, in the wilderness. He learned every mountain. He learned every valley. He learned every danger. He learned every trial. He learned every path. He learned every trail. He learned every nook. He learned every cranny. He learned every twist. He learned every turn. And Moses, for 40 years, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to tell you that God has prepared your life for you. I'm trying to tell you that God has prepared victory. God has offered to you, for you, a promised land. He's offered a land that flows of milk and honey. But it doesn't come easy. You'll have battles. You'll have trials. You'll have illness. You'll have heartache. You'll have lonely nights. But bless God, God promises you the promised land. And God said, I've already been over here and checked it out for you. I planned your journey. I got my leader. I took him over here. And we planned your journey. Now you said you're going to have struggles. But I promise you that there'll not be a struggle that you can't take care of. There'll not be a burden that you can't bear. There'll not be a heartache that you cannot, that you, or you not, cannot be sustained. So, this they did. You four fellows stand up. Moses, you come to the front here with me. So, I go first. God goes and inspires the land. He prepares the journey, just like Brother Young. God prepares for food every morning. He prepares for water for their thirst. He prepares a cloud for their direction. He prepares a pillar of fire for their warmth. He prepares every step of the way. And then God comes and says to Moses, Let me take you on the same journey, Moses. For 40 years, Moses journeys in that wilderness. He learns every enemy that they must face, every battle they'll have to fight, every burden they'll have to bear. And then together, God and Moses return to the people. And now, let me say to all of you, Israelites, I prepared my leader for you. You have a journey. It's a glory land. It's the glory land. It flows with milk and honey. I love you. I've chosen it for you. But I love you so much, I'm not going to give it to you without a price. For that for which you pay is more valuable to you. And so between us and the promised land, there is a wilderness. I won't say that you will not hurt justice, but young in Europe. Uh, there's no struggle over there. Did you ever pack a suitcase every night for two weeks and unpack it the next morning? Did you ever get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to catch a plane at the airport so you can fly to the next place? There are going to be some struggles over there. There are going to be some tough times in Europe. But to, to see all that you'll see. Now, I'm not going to say to you, Israelite, it's going to be an easy journey. I am going to say, when you get to the promised land, you'll sing, it will be worth it all. And that's what you'll say. Because I have gone before you and prepared the trip. And I've taken my man. You cannot see me uh, visibly, so I even prepared my man. And so shall we journey, please, toward the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. And they didn't sing that well, but the best they could. And they, every preparation, every time they got thirsty, smite the rock and hold Every morning there was, there was manna that came from heaven. Every day that they're supposed to move, the cloud lifted and they followed that cloud. Every provision they needed, every strength for every burden, every way for every struggle, every, every help for every hurt, God had provided for them. He had inspired the land. And they kept on going. And now they've come to a place called Kadesh Barnea. Just over there is the promised land. Now follow it carefully. They chose 12 spies. That's the dumbest thing they ever did. They appointed a committee. A committee is a group of the unprepared or unqualified to do the unnecessary, to read the minutes and waste the hours. Somebody said that a camel is a horse assembled by a Baptist committee. They appointed a committee. You fellas stay right here. Now, what should they have done? Kept on going. When the burdens come, keep on going. 
when the heartaches come, keep on. God has provided for your trip, but God has not provided for your stay. God has not provided for your stop. You stop and you lose the visions of God. Not one time between Egypt and the promised land did God provide for them to quit. What they should have done is they should have followed Moses across the Jordan River in the promised land. But instead, they send these 12 spies over. And these spies come back and say, it's a wonderful land. It flows with milk and honey. Look at these pomegranates and look at this, these grapes. Uh, this, the, the clusters of grapes are so big. It took two men to carry a cluster on a pole. They're Texas grapes. And, and uh, two men to carry a cluster on a pole. It's wonderful. i got some bad news for you. Is that the giants over there? Where's Keith? <laughs> Just when I need him, he's not here. The giants over there. You listen to me, folks. God expired the land, and God provided a way to lick those giants, just like He did the first part of the journey. Don't forget, God said, "I expired the land. I have prepared." The, your journey for you, and that's the glory land, the land that flows with milk and honey. I prepared it for you. Now go on in. But they did not. They said, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. I've got news for you, buddy. A grasshopper plus God can lick any giant in the whole world. And so they turned and went back. Thank you, fellas. They trusted 12 human spies over God the Aspire. God had espied the land. God had prepared it. Now then, follow me carefully. Likewise, God has successes for you. God has great plans for us. God has a glory land for you. God has a promised land for you. God has successes and joys and happiness. But I remind you, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And between you and every joy, there is a tear. And between you and every victory, there is a battle. And between you and every deliverance, there is a struggle. And so we too have promised lands that we may inhabit. God likewise has victories for us to win. But to get to your promised land, there are battles. And their burdens. But it reminds you. Well, a fellow came to me just a few days ago. He said, Brother Hiles, I've had more trouble since I got saved than I did before I got saved. Well, he said, when I got saved, I thought everything was going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. But I'll tell you what, the all right is so much better than the devil's all right. God wants you to pay a price to get there. If it's scripture, scripture. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Do you know what I said? And I said that to this fella. Why you said I got saved? I've got more I've got more battles and problems than I had before I got saved. Yes, but you also have the problem solver who's out yonder is buying the land for you. And so to get to our promised land are battles and burdens. But I got some good news for you. He likewise has gone ahead. God has gone ahead. This is your life now. Here you are over here. God has some wonderful, wonderful victories. Hey, look at this church this morning. How did we get this great church here? Through many dangers, toils, and snares we have already come. His grace has led us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. So, God says to you, I've gone ahead of you in your own life. I have victories for you. I have a promised land for you. But he said, there are battles and there are struggles and there are problems between there. But God says, I have gone ahead of you in your life. And I have planned it all. Here's what God says. I want the best for you. I know that means difficulties, he says. I have gone ahead and prepared for you. For every battle. I have prepared a victory. For every burden, I have prepared 
your strength. For every struggle I have prepared a way. And you folks that says this morning and yawning, let me remind you that there are hundreds of people here that are hanging on every word this preacher says because they're in the struggles right now. And those of you facing trials and struggles and heartaches, I've got news for you. The Heavenly Father's already been there and He prepared the strength for you today to bear the burden that you have to bear. Every battle I plan the victory, he says. I planned your life for you. I spied the land. For every burden, I prepared strength. For every struggle, I prepared a way. You will face, God says to you, you will face no battle that you cannot win. You will face no burden that you cannot bear. God says to you, you will face no problem that you cannot solve in your life, your, your wilderness, your struggles to get to your promised land. You will face no mountains you cannot climb. You will face no evening you cannot, enemy you cannot defeat. You will face nothing that I have not faced already. Now follow me carefully, don't leave me. Here's your life. The Heavenly Father wants you to have victory, but He knows that no good victories can be won unless there are battles. And so between you and victory, there are battles. But God has gone ahead and prepared. Boy, I love this. The struggles First Baptist Church has been through in these over 110, 110 years or more. Let's see, 100 and, uh, 114 years it'll be this, this November. The struggles this church has faced in those 114 years and over 41 years that I've been your pastor, God went by here a long, long time ago. And God, He didn't, God will not take away the struggle. He wants you to struggle. You won't depend on Him as much as you struggle. But I've got news. He's already been there and God has prepared your life for you and victory and glory. But don't turn back. Keep on going. Now, I'll be seemingly a bit arrogant this morning for a moment. Would you listen, please, to me carefully? Again, I say, here is your life, and there is your victory. There is your glory land. There is your land that flows with milk and honey. But between you and the land, there is a wilderness. And God said, I've gone ahead and prepared for you. Just like Brother Young does in Europe for those who win the contest. Just like I did for Israel back in the land in the land of Egypt all the way to Canaan. But God does something else. God comes back and calls a leader. They call them pastors. And God takes him on the path that you must endure. Just like God took Moses on the path that Israel must endure. <clears throat> and and Moses for 40 years stayed there. And so God calls a leader. And that leader is taken by God and goes through his training so that he may go back <clears throat> and guide you. A long time before we ever ran buses. A little Texas boy lived in the ghettos of Southwest Dallas. What was God doing? God was putting me in the wilderness so I could come back and run two or three hundred buses in Chicago every Lord's Day and reach the bus kids of Chicago. A long time before we ever started a rescue mission, my dad was an alcoholic. Came home drunk every Saturday night and many other nights during the week. What was God doing? God was sending me to the wilderness to get ready to go back and say to you mission men, the way is prepared. There is a way. I've been there. I've espied the land for you a long time before we reached the poor. I lived in the Depression. God was putting me in the wilderness so I could come back and, and, and work with those of you that are poor. A long time before we extended a hand to the street people 
My dad slept on the streets of downtown Dallas, and night after night, my mother and I went and sobered him up on the streets of downtown Dallas. I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, God loves you so much. He said, I've gone ahead of you. I've prepared all, but also I've gone back here. I've got the man and prepared him so that man can lead you. God is simply saying, I have prepared. You can have the victory, but you're going to have to struggle. But I have prepared a victory for every battle and a way through every heartache and a strength for every burden. I have espied the land for you. A long time before I comforted the innocent children of broken homes, I saw my daddy one Monday morning walk out of our house never to return. And on my knees as a, as a lad, I said, Daddy, wouldn't you rather have me than whiskey? And my daddy cursed and stepped over me so that every bus kid here who lives in that kind of a situation for the house understands. I've been there. So God said, I went ahead for you. I prepared the way for you. You're going to have heartaches, but you can make it. God simply said, I not only have been there, but I've put Moses there. Preacher boy, I've been where you're going. That's one reason about Howells Anderson College. There are many good things about Howells Anderson College, not the least of it, which you have a 74-year-old man here who's traveled every trail you're going to have to travel. Who's fought every battle you have to fight. Bus kid, I have sat where you're sitting. Betrayed one, I have felt what you're feeling. Servicemen, I have walked where you walk. Poverty ridden one, I have sat at your table also. Ghetto bound one, I have lived where you live. I'm sure you old folk, older people, members have heard this story, son. I went out to a poor section of Hammond, the Columbia Center, to visit years ago. I knocked on the door. A little lady came to the door, very humbly dressed, clothed and covered, but very poor. Inside the house was obviously what little furniture they could stir up. A little boy, about the age that I was, when we were at the deepest of our poverty, was inside the house. And I said, Ma'am, I'm Brother Hiles from First Baptist Church in Hammond. A big smile came across her face. Oh, Brother Hiles, I've heard you on the radio. I've heard so much about you. We've never met you, but we've loved you and we've admired you for a distance. Oh, Brother Hiles, what an honor it is to have you come by to see us. Won't you come in? and have a seat. I walked over to the chair. I saw stuffing coming out of the chair. I saw an old chair that somebody discarded. Obviously was reclaimed from a garbage dump somewhere. The stuffing was coming out the sides. And I sat down in that chair. And she said, Oh, Brother Hiles, I'm sorry. You're a pastor of a big church. You drive a nice car. I've seen your house. You live in a nice house. I'm ashamed to make you sit there. And I said, ma'am, let me tell you a story. I grew up in the Depression. Your little place here is much nicer than we ever lived in. Is that right? That's right. I said, that isn't all. The stuffings that come out, come out of your chairs, we couldn't even afford stuffings. She said, you mean you have a chair like that? I said, not that nice. Is that right? I said, that's right. She, I, I said, uh, none of that. We didn't have food to eat. We, had, we, we went to bed hungry. My mother used to put me to bed at 4 o'clock in the afternoon because we had no food for supper. We had no cover. Mother put pillows over me, or you call them the van cushions, or sofa cushions over me at night on a cold night. We had no quilts. We had no blankets. She said, Brother Hiles, 
I can't believe that. I wanted a Christ. I wanted a water Christ baptized them both the next Sunday as I walked out the door. Listen to me. As I walked out the door, the little boy said, Mama, Brother Hiles sat where I sit. Brother Hiles sat where I sit. I went back to Ezekiel, I think it's chapter 3 and verse 15, where Ezekiel said he went to the, went to the land of bondage and he sat where they sat. Listen carefully to me, folks. Our Heavenly Father's planned a life for you. He's planned victories for you. There are wonderful things out there. You house enters and causes quitters will never make it. You turn backers will never make it. You cowards will never make it. God said, I've got a promised land for you. Victories and blessings beyond measure for you. He said, but between here and there, you got some tears to shed, some lonely nights to spend. There are enemies out there waiting for you. There are serpents and wild animals waiting for you. So God said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go out there and inspire the land for you. I'm going to prepare, and God has, pre- Listen, God has prepared your way all the way through. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. Sing it. All I have to do is follow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. Get it? Strength for today is mine all the way. And all that I need for tomorrow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is uh, So you come to your cadence for me. Don't stop. Don't send out a bunch of spies. Just keep on going. And don't turn back. What I'm saying and I'll close. God has gone to great lengths to prepare you for your journey. And prepare the journey for you. You can take whatever cometh. I said you can take whatever cometh. I said you can take whatever cometh. The promised land is yours. Keep on going. Your only trouble will be if you stop. I've been your preacher for 41 years. I've sat in the valley with thousands of you. My desk has caught your tears. In some cases, my shoulders have caught your tears. These eyes have been like rivers of water for these 41 years. I hurt for you. But I want to tell you this morning, whatever burden you're facing, whatever sorrow, whatever heartache, whatever struggle, whatever battle, he's already been there. And he has espied the land for you. And God comes back to you and says, I won't promise you an easy trip, but I'll promise you a wonderful destination. I promise you that when you get there, you'll thank God for the price you have to pay. But he's prepared for it. And whatever struggle that you're enduring this morning, God has prepared strength enough. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tested or tempted above that ye are able and will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. No battle will ever come before you if you keep on going that you cannot win. And no burden will ever be placed on your shoulder that you cannot bear because God has been there. And not only that, He's taken a few others of us too and placed us there. So we can come back and say, as Brother Young says, don't worry, I prepared the trip. Oh, we may go through some tough weather on the flight overseas. But airplane poison is dangerous. One drop will kill you. And I said that airplane poison is dangerous. One drop will kill you. You've got to control yourselves. But... We, we may have to fasten our safety belts. We may go through some, some clouds and storms all the way over. But I prepared it. We'll have to, to get tired some, but I've already got it prepared. 
And whatever burden you bear this morning, whatever heartache you face, whatever sorrow you feel, whatever lonely moment that you know, he's been there. He has inspired the land. Would you bow your heads, please? Your Bibles, please.